So I just had the pleasure of sitting down and just finishing this book called QBQ, The Question Behind the Question by uh, John Miller. And um, to be honest, it's probably one of the my favorite, my personal favorite books that I have read, not because, you know, the, the quality, but sadly to say because of I'm, it, how quick of a read it was. I, I'm, not, I'm a very slow reader. Reading is usually, you know, pretty frustrating to me. And reading this book only took me three days. I think I sat down maybe three or four times, and in, within that time, I was finished with it. And, you know, since that's the fact, it's, it's one of those books that I think I'm going to keep, keep around, you know, for a while in my life because I might want to go back and reference it. Uh, especially because some of the concepts and ideas in this book don't really, you know, make sense just yet to me. I think I think there's something there that I can take from it, but it's going to take me, you know, a couple more times reading through it where I can, um, you know, fully grasp what Miller is trying to tell me. But um, some of the ideas in this book I do think are very good, mainly um, the the idea of blame, the fact that blame is just something that you should completely forget about when 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 shit goes wrong within an organization you shouldn't be looking for someone else you know who dropped the ball you know or not question it's a question that you shouldn't be asking why isn't that department why weren't they doing you know what they were supposed to be doing and you know questions like those are questions that you should just not even let into your brain obviously you know that's not you know it's going to be kind of hard not you know to keep those questions out because Miller uh, uses the question behind the question off the basis that our first initial actions or first initial thoughts on something are negative thoughts, which is the whole reason behind the question behind the question is that we should, you know, further analyze our first initial thoughts to think, you know, is that really what the situation is? Is this really what, you know, is going on here? And I get that, and I really do get that, but the parts where I, I don't see that really helping me is that when it comes to decision making in one's life. Um, you know, we make thousands, millions of decisions daily, as Miller says in the book, you know, even the choice not to do something is still a decision that we make. And um, the question behind the question tells us that, are those decisions really the best, the best that you can do? Is that really you working to your full potential? And that's, that's a good idea that I can wrap my head around, but you know, when it comes to decision making, there's so many littler decisions that go into making that, you know, that ultimate decision. And I have enough trouble already, you know, making, you know, big decisions. You know, I, I mean, I do it, but I, I hate doing it. I, I'm always, I hate that feeling of, is this the right move for me? Is this what I should be doing? But, and then, and then Miller comes in and saying, well, you know, you should, you should almost second guess that, that, um, that decision that you made. Is that, is that really the correct decision? And that's so, sort of at first, it seems like it's just overcomplicating things. And that, you know, I, what if I want to just go with my initial gut? The way that I was taught to take exams as a kid was go with your initial, your initial gut thought. You know, the first thing that you see, you know, you think, oh, you know, this is the right answer. You shouldn't go back and second guess yourself. I understand that Miller's saying it's more of a, a reflection um, or a further analysis of is this the right decision or choice? But it's just, you know, when, when decision making is as stressful for someone like me, I, it's that, that whole second guessing or further analyzing that decision is just, you know, that's gonna, it's gonna make me go crazy. But I think I, I'll further, I'll, I'll, I'll more understand what he's trying to say by that after, you know, a couple more read-throughs of the book. Um, the other idea that I, I really like and that I think is I have a problem with myself and that I'm going to try to fix after reading this book is worrying about other people. When, when, I, when I have a job and, I, and I, you know, something goes wrong, my first thought is not, oh man, what did, what did I do wrong? It was I like, maybe, or what can I do better to prevent this? My first initial thought is, who the hell's fault is this? And something needs to happen to them, you know, that's, you know, we can move on after, but we need to you know, look at why, like, why it has happened and, you know, whose fault it is that happened. And Miller says, you know, that's not something you should be worried about. And as much as everyone, I feel like, wants to blame somebody when something bad happens, because it's, it's almost like a satisfying feeling to, you know, say, well, you know, it's their fault and that's why it happened. And, you know, it's, it's like kind of like releases, you know, a little bit of tension when you're upset about, you know, the downfall of something or when something goes wrong. But Miller says that it's, the right thing to do is just worry about yourself 
and to not even think, oh, was this my fault or, you know, just, just move on and do what you do and what you're responsible for and do it to your full potential. And you need to just, just worry about yourself. You need to wake up every morning and you need to say, what can I do to make myself the most efficient and most productive today? And that's something that I really think I should start doing in my life. You know, it would make me a better student and a better person all around. And that's something, that's, that is the main point that I really think I would take from this book. The, um, the story that I liked most is the story about the pilot um, with his 12-year-old daughter flying over Lake Michigan. And when the plane, or the engine of the plane starts to cut out, um, the father, you know, he, he, he's not even phased. He tells his 12-year-old daughter, he's got a 12-year-old daughter, you know, would usually be freaking out. And he remains completely calm and says, you know what, this is the situation at hand, this is what we're going to do. And he does it. And it doesn't even work the first time. And he says, okay, we're still not going to worry about it. We're going to try to nosedive and, you know, do something completely dangerous that's going to risk our lives. But it's, it's, for, it's for what, you know, it's what I got to do. I'm working with the situations I got. I don't have an engine on my plane right now, but I'm not going to let that stop me, you know. I'm going to keep... I'm gonna keep going until, until I can't. I know I can't do anything anymore, you know. And, and him not doing anything anymore would ultimately be, you know, him crashing into Lake Michigan. But I thought that was that was really interesting, especially at the end, when Miller says, you know, any any engines cut out on you recently, and you know, I thought, yeah, yeah. I mean, nothing as tragic as you know a plane engine that I'm flying, but but yeah, you know, there are a lot of things that you know have been these little like you know speed bumps in you know in my life but and and I can even think of multiple uh situations recently but and in those situations I just looked for blame for other people and you know I think that's I I, I could have taken a better approach now looking back at it I kind of wish you know the semester had started a little bit earlier and I had to read this book before those situations happened but now that I have read this, and I, I think I could go back and I could handle those situations so much better than I did before. And that is the main thing that I took from the Question Behind the Question book by John Miller. And that will hopefully make me you know, a better person in, in general.